Hello everybody and a good day to you all today. I'm talking about Alien season number one, episode number five. Hildebrand Sterling. Sterling. And this episode is directed by James Hayes. And here we have some more insight into the mind of Dr. Kressler. Turns out, he's starting he's to realize he's not as smart as he thinks he is. Yes. Because see... Dr. Kressler is trying to understand the mindset of this murderer. He's trying to understand his motivations on why he's killing people. And he thinks he has his own theory, and he believes his own story and his own juice. So he pretty much knows, because he, he knows, we all know, most of, most, most of us all know that he most, most of the time he is the smartest person in the room. He is. Most of the time he is. But this time he starts to realize, maybe not. Maybe not. He may not be the smartest person in the room all the time. Sometimes somebody else can shine too. He, he's not the only person who can give all these as good sound advice and all this crap. No, somebody else can say something too. They don't have to, they don't have to be as educated as him, or to have went to the same schooling as him to know things. People are smart. So intelligence, intelligence and good advice can come from anywhere. But he learns that here and he has to face that the hard way. Because here's the thing. Here's this was this is going on. Okay, now they they have all this evidence that that's going on. They got they got that they got that letter last episode from from the killer, he let, 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 letting them know that he's watching them, because they they trying they trying to find out who he is and he's watching them, letting them know he knows what's going on. So they're freaking out about that, and so they had another meeting, and then and then you have Sarah, who's who, who come up with a theory of her own, and she says maybe it was abused by a woman or his mother. And that, that, that went against everything Dr. Kressler was, was going with, everything he was standing for, and it just threw him through the frenzy, it just threw him out of whack because no one else can be smarter than him. He has to be the smart person in the room, and if someone else says something else that, that, that proves that he's wrong, he did not know how to handle it. And he snapped like nobody's business, and everybody else just said, dude, calm down, okay? She may be right. And it turns out, well, she was. And this is, not the, this is not the first conversation. Now, the first time, it was very intense because he, can't, he, he wanted to be the smart person in the room. And he couldn't handle somebody else smarter than him in the room, too. Especially somebody who didn't go to the same college that he did or had the same experiences as he did. And so, therefore, he thought he, nobody could tell him that he's wrong. But then they had their second encounter, which I love. was my favorite scene in the whole entire TV show. My favorite scene. Because you have Dr. Kressler eating dinner. And you have Sarah who's pretty much doing her own investigation inside the police sta inside the police um, station because she, she really just is just a secretary, but so but she but she has access to all the information, and and nobody really pay attention to her that much because they, they, they think well, she, cause since she's a woman they don't think she'll figure anything out so so she can she so she's um, learning how to pretty much put the pieces together herself and she can figure out what's going on what's happening in the case and maybe her, find out herself who actually is the killer, and she came up with two suspects of her, of her own. Based off of the information that's before her, and so she pretty much goes to Dr. Kressler to let her know what's going on with um, Theodore Russell Roosevelt, and he had a message for her, nothing for him. And they had that second encounter, and and since she saw the cracks in him, she knew what to poke. She knew exactly what to poke. He said, usually he studies everybody else, and he pokes at their insecurities because because sometimes. If they get too close to him, or they just say something he doesn't like, he, 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 pokes at, he pokes at their insecurities and their weaknesses to pretty much, I don't know, to, to bully them, to, to push them away, or to, to, put, to put them in their place. But this time, she saw his cracks and his weaknesses. And she poked at them, and it was beautiful. Because, see, the thing, see, here's the thing. She didn't say anything that was mean or hateful. She didn't say anything mean or hateful. She said it all with her face and her eyes. So, she, he had to hear the dinner table. Having his dinner, she shows up with a message from the from, from Theodore Roosevelt. She delivered it. She about to leave. He asked her to stay. She said fine. And then that she asked, she asked he wants him to drink, and she and he and so she he, he, she drinks some of his wine, and she said I'll go for a whiskey. I said okay, some stronger stuff. And then she gives a speech about how her father taught her that if she's gonna be in the man's world, she got to know how to drink like a man. Which was a stab at him because he was drinking wine. Not nothing hardcore, nothing, no hard. hard, hard, hard. This is a nice little wine with his with his meal. And so, so now she, she, she not only did she order whiskey for herself, but she ordered, she ordered whiskey for him. 
And then she took a step of the, took it like a champ. They didn't phase her. And then she waited till he drunk his. And she looked at him saying, you're going to punk out. And you can see the pressure on his face. You can see the pressure in his mind saying, I can't act like this too strong for me. Act like too strong for me. I'm sure I'm weak. And so he took the sip. Yeah, he took it. But you can tell it was a struggle. You can tell it was a struggle. And that's all she needed. That's all she needed. Because you, you can see it all in her face, in, even in her eyes saying, I'm more man than you. And after he did that, she walked off. Peace out. And then left. And that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it made me love her more as a character. I said, oh my God. Ah, oh, it was so beautiful. Oh, it was so beautiful. Because sometimes, crabs are going to be a, a, butt, a little bit of a butt. In his pursuit to try to find the answers, and he's struggling right now because because usually the answers come easy for him, but now that he's struggling to find out, uh, trying to get an idea of what who this man is or what his motivations are, maybe it's no motivations at all. Maybe it's like to kill people. Who knows? And he just he just because to him it has to be a purpose. It has to be a reason for this to happen. And he he visited his old professors. He even went to prison to try to visit a, a, a person who actually another killer who killed children, trying to get an, a, an idea from him, and got nothing. So watching him struggle, watching him learn some humility, watching him like um, learn that maybe it's okay that he's not the smart person in the room, was just um, it was just amazing. And also you you see everybody else because you see because everybody else around him is starting to grow more as as the characters. I mean even um John, who pretty much was the alcoholic, um, slept around a lot, and this is an il illustrator. Now he started to see him. He started to see him become a little bit more a detective himself. And he started to see him fi like finding his way. And then Dakota, I mean not Dakota, or Dakota Fanning, I guess, but she, but I mean Sarah. And you see her get stronger and stronger as a person. And even uh, uh, the, the two brothers, they're finding that they're well, they already been like sort of like having their thing going on, but they, but you see them growing more in the police rank. Now they have now they have guns now. It's th it's weird how they are treated. In the police station, because they, 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 they're police themselves, but they're not really with the police at the same time too. And they're, they're, they're a whole separate entity because they, they use science to help them um, find out who criminals are, and science techniques to help them track down the bad guy. While the, while, while, while the, while the police pretty much just beat up people and use interrogation, interrogation to people get the, what they want. Yeah, and you see, and you're also seeing uh, Theodore Roosevelt, the commissioner. Finding out who on his um, police force is not really on that on uh, up and up, because now they pretty much now they have their suspect, and now they now, now everybody pretty much almost pretty much know who the bad guy is. They just got to catch him and proof him and, and connect him to it, and so but they having little struggles with that because a lot of people in the police force, especially this, um Captain Con Connor, who pretty much in the pocket of the rich people and the mayor himself, give him orders to pretty much try to derail Roosevelt from actually finding out who's the bad guy is because the bad guy is rich and has very powerful influence and so therefore they don't want to touch him which is really messed up so he's going around killing kids and everybody's just trying to turn a blind eye to it but Roosevelt's saying nope not on my watch if he's killing kids in my city he's going down I don't care how rich he is I don't care who he knows I don't care what connections he's got he's going down and so you find out Captain Connor learns that learns that about that the hard way it looks like he he he, he, he got to get a new, a new job now, yeah. So, but overall, great episode. Willie did enjoy it a whole lot. Had a whole lot of fun watching it, watching the story unfold, watching them getting closer and closer to the bad guy. How they going to stop him? I don't know just yet, but they're on the right path, which is fantastic. So leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode of the Alienists. And if you haven't watched it, check it out for yourself and see my word for it. Hopefully, when you watch it, you will enjoy it and have fun watching it too. And just like before, give my channel a big little thumbs up, hit, hit the like button, shabam. Also, hit that little bell at the end so you, so you get like constant reminders when I make, upload a video. And pretty much all I got to say about that is like I always say in my dreams and in my life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, peoples.